This is ZNS Total Sports, brought to you by 4th Terrace Diagnostic Center. Welcome to sports, everybody. The government secondary school's basketball season back in action yesterday. In senior boys play, two potential playoff previews on the court. First up at the Donald Davis Gym, the defending champion Doris Johnson, Mystic Marlins, and the Anton Rogers Timberwolves battling for second place in the standings. And this one didn't disappoint. This game going right down to the wire with Doris Johnson holding up Anatol 84-80. This win was very big, you know, um, we already uh, early in the season we lost the game by one point, you know, in overtime the CC Suite, you know, so we definitely couldn't afford to lose this game, you know. Definitely like how the guys executed even though we could do a much better job and we just got to, you know, continue to play hard. I can't tell you how many lead changes it had. You know, it was good basketball. The officiating was okay. Um, hats off to Coach Bolts and his guys. They played a hell of a game. Um, and we think we play pretty good too. It's just some, some small little minor adjustments that we need to make. Over at the AF Auto League Gym, not as much excitement. The undefeated CI Gibson Rattlers had their way with the CC Sweeting Cobras, winning 75. 52. We set goals in terms of each quarter what we wanted to do and fall short a little bit by five points but hey as the game goes on we're going to get better. I think our bench need to be uh, zoned in a little bit more and understand exactly what we want them to do. This was another game where some of the marquee players you hope would step up and play but they go in a shell and, and, and AJ nothing but a number you know uh, uh, if you're playing for me you should you should take on my, my demeanor. And all of my teams in the past, you know, take on my demeanor. We never say die, we get in your face, we grab, we bite, we do whatever it takes to win, and we were a hell of a defensive team. And this is one of the weakest defensive teams I ever had, not because they can't play D, because they don't want to play D. Come tomorrow, there will be another big senior boys matchup at the AF Adderley Gym. As the regular season comes to a close, C.I. Gibson and Doris Jones will go head-to-head -head with the pennant on the line. I don't want to lose the wrong time, though. <laughs> but, hey... You know, that's the, the, bas the game of basketball goes funny sometimes, but you know, we're going to try to, our best to keep these boys in focus. we got to come out and play hard, and that's playing hard for four quarters. If we don't come out and play hard, you know, and then we'll lose the game. But I've been preaching them from day one, just come out and play hard, you know, and with the season being short, we definitely have no room for mistakes. Whoever wins the pennant tomorrow will play CC Swinning in the first round of the playoffs, and Cobra's coach Mario Boleg says he's looking to pull the upset either way. We've beaten Doris. Uh, we had a good game that day. And if it's C.I. Yeah, Gibson, I sure you'll be in, and, and it'll be in a, a better showing than what you see just now. Buddy Heal and New Orleans Pelicans picking up a big win last night. 118-98 over the Orlando Magic. Buddy finished up 4 for 11 from the field and 2 of 8 from behind the 3-point arc. He had 10 points, 4 rebounds, and 3 assists in 24 minutes. Now, because of his transition into the NBA last year, Buddy was not available to the Bahamas for international competition. This year, though, the Bahamas Basketball Federation hopes Buddy and a few others will be added to the roster as they go after a spot at the Olympics. We're speaking to persons like Eric Gordon, who is uh, saying if the program is right as it relates to the funding and ensuring that they have the, the necessary insurance and Medicare, uh, they, they can use that release from the United States and come together. Buddy is doing a good job now uh, speaking with other players. Of course, you know, our senior man is already uh, slaughtered to play in a tournament in July, uh, which is going to be a six-team tournament in the top four that will move on to the pool, to the A division. And uh, Kendall Isaac, with its new upgrade, it's, it's ideal now for home and away. That's going to take effect November 2017. So once again, even after the tournament in July, uh, once we move into Zone A, we're going to be playing in November right here in the Bahamas, and the Bahamas are going to have the opportunity to see their own uh, national team players playing in front of their, their own, you know, in the backyard. Now to go along with national team competition, the BBF has another big initiative on the drawing board this year. We're in discussion with the NBA and all in, in trying to bring uh, Basketball Without Borders champions in, in the month of July. Um, there's some discussion going on. Uh, it's going to happen. They uh, had their visit here. The executives of the NBA were here uh, in the Christmas. We met and it's something that we're going to do. As the 2-4-2 looks to regain the Carifta swim title it relinquished last year, the Bahamas Swimming Federation will put together the best team possible and leading the way will be a Carifta veteran. Aubrey Higgs, um, she is now at the University of South Carolina. This is our last Carifta and she will be coming home to compete. So we expect Aubrey who's dominated 
every year in Carifta for the six years she's competed to be outstanding here at home in her last Carifta. And speaking about Aubrey Higg, she was in action for South Carolina last weekend as they lost a dual meet with Duke. Aubrey was third in the 100-yard breaststroke in 105.89, also third in the 200 breaststroke in 222.23. She was also sixth in the 200 IM in 208.03. The Bahamas has been awarded the fourth edition of the IAAF World Relays in 2019, and the local organizing committee wants to extend that even further. We placed a bid for the 2021 and the 2023 edition of the World Relays. We also presented the gargantuan ideal of the Bahamas becoming the home of the World Relays, so that the name Bahamas becomes synonymous with the IWF World Relays. The University of the Bahamas track and field team has been competing abroad for a few years now. So the question is, when will a meet take place here at home? Coach Gardner and myself has really started talking about um, a spring break invitational that we'd like to see in 2018 um, here. We've already started to talk to some um, universities about that. And so as early as March or April of, of next year, we're um, hoping to host a major um, spring break invitational that will feature um, um, some major Division I schools here. As you know, we've hosted um, basketball um, in the past. That will continue. Um, soccer is next on tap. We're looking to host something as early as August um, with our men's soccer team. So each year we hope to build upon what we did last year. And that will do it for sports. Stay tuned. Check on weather still to come.